Today's political headlines and the results from New Hampshire last night with the national director for the centrist No Labels political group, former Democratic Congressman Joe Cunningham. Joe, thanks so much for coming on with us. I, I want to get your thoughts on New Hampshire last night. Is the Republican primary race over? Well, I mean, it certainly played out last night according to how the pundits and pollsters were predicting it. Uh, and it seems to be going along this, this trend of these presumptive nominees. But that's why No Labels has been working to provide Americans with a third option. Because, you know, two-thirds of Americans don't want to see this rematch between Trump and Biden. So we're more focused on getting on the ballot and being able be in a position where we can offer Americans another, vo another voice, another choice. Yeah, your party or your group, we won't call it a party, right? Uh, it, it's been weighing this decision uh, of getting potentially a third party person in the presidential race. A lot of speculation over who it might be, when it might be announced. Do the results last night bring you any closer to a decision? Do you, do you have a deadline set for that decision? Look, we've always said uh, we're going to wait until Super Tuesday. And we want to wait to find out who these presumptive nominees are, and we're going to listen to America. And if America wants another choice, uh, then we're going to secure the ballot in as many states as we can with a pathway to 50 states and then offer that ballot line to a ticket, a bipartisan ticket. Because, you know, what we're doing is not about what no labels want. This is what the majority of Americans want. And I think for the first time in mo our modern history, you know, we're faced with two presumptive nominees that, that most Americans are just not excited about. Would you say that if Nikki Haley dropped out, it, it might expedite the process of your group deciding? No, we're in control of our own timeline, and those aren't dictated by other people's decisions. So the group has been, uh, you specifically, have been vocal in your opposition to Donald Trump. There are concerns that any effort toward a third party, a, a more moderate sort of view of politics, would serve as a spoiler and bring someone that you've been vocal against into the White House and give Donald Trump four years, another four years. Well, how do you weigh whether any effort on behalf of no labels would play spoiler in the general election? I mean, I, I categorically reject that argument uh, just because, you know, I served in Congress, Democrat, lifelong Democrat uh, from Charleston, South Carolina. You may remember I voted to impeach Donald Trump. Um, the, the the fact is, we're simply offering going to be offering that ballot line to another choice, and you know, for folks to say it's going to impact election one way or another, it's like complaining about the food before it's even brought out of the kitchen. Uh, we don't know if we're going to offer that ballot line. We don't know who we're going to offer that ballot line. So you can't say it's going to impact the election one way or another without even knowing what names are going to be on that ballot. But if you look at the calculus and you ultimately determine that it would in fact favor President Trump's chances, would you then decide we'll, we'll back President Biden we're, instead? We're not going to do anything to help put President Trump back in the White House. And here's the most important thing I want to say, because we're so set in this, in this mindset that in this duopoly, you need to get over 50 percent to mm -hmm. win the election, right? In a competitive three-way race, and this is important because this is why we have a pathway to victory if we offer this ticket line. Every single state in our country, with the exception of two states, offer all their electoral votes to the candidate who receives the most number of votes. Meaning, in a competitive three-way race, you know, that lowers the bar from over 50 percent down through the 40s, even into the 30s. Meaning a competitive third party can win with just 34 percent of the vote. We don't have to get over 50 percent of the vote. That's the math that people need to keep in the back of their minds right now. Uh, I do want to give you an opportunity to respond to some criticism out there about your group. As you all know, some uh, donors filed a, a lawsuit against the group alleging that it had lost its way and betrayed its donors' trust. What's your response to that criticism and also to folks that may have been considering supporting your group that now are perhaps giving it second thought? That's just a, a frivolous lawsuit. It's a frivolous complaint. Uh, this is all part of a pattern. Look, there's a, there is a... Uh, contingency of DC insiders of politicos who simply do not want Americans to have another choice and we're not listening to them we don't work for them you know we've always served the common sense majority of Americans two-thirds of America are not happy with these presumptive nominees and one other choice and so no labels it's a 501 c4 it's been around for 14 years it's a bipartisan group that's been trying to bridge this partisan divide and right now, we're reflecting on what America wants right now, which is another option.
There, there is criticism that the group uh, doesn't have to reveal exactly who is donating to it. Uh, there's concern about that kind of transparency. What's your response? We're not a political campaign. And I agree that political campaigns should have to reveal their donors. And if a campaign is launched, that'll be up to the campaign, the PAC, or wh whoever else associated with it to reveal that. But what's important to remember is that we are gaining ballot access. That's what No Labels is doing. So it's different from a campaign. And so these attacks we've been getting, we're akin to a, a voter registration drive. And sure. we're protected by the First Amendment. But it, it's shameful, in my view, that certain groups and people are attacking us for gaining ballot access. This is the United States of America. I'm a lifelong Democrat. Voting rights is something that Democrats have held the mantle on. That's now being undermined by groups that are simply trying to block people from the ballot. Talk to Congressman Dean Phillips. He's experienced it firsthand. You know, we're seeing this play out all across the country. And it's discouraging because, you know, everybody should be able to participate in our democracy. The choices should not be limited. And, you know, again, being a Democrat all my life, it's been our job to go out there and make the case on why our candidate or why our party should be chosen, not try to, to suppress opposition, not trying to remove people from the ballot or keep people off the ballot. All should be welcome, and we should be voting on ideas and policies. So if the group gets ballot access for a certain candidate that then launches the campaign, would it then come forward and reveal its donors? A campaign and a super PAC would be, you know, it would be adhering to the laws and, and disclosing their donors as required by the FEC. Yeah. Former Congressman Joe Cunningham, got to leave the conversation there. Appreciate you sharing some time with us. Thanks, Boris. Of course. Thanks so much. Still ahead, a growing number of lawmakers are questioning the president's decision to strike Houthi rebels 